You having so much difficulty huffing, puffing, and don't you realize that because of your weight? Oh yeah, I know. I'm not. And that doesn't stimulate you to do something about it. There's no moment more intense on an episode of My 600 Pound Life than seeing someone waiting in Dr. Now's office after a bad weigh-in. Dr. Now delivers some of the best tough love on TV, and here are some of his most ruthless lectures to patients who severely needed it. Before we get started though, leave a comment down below. What's the best My 600 Pound Life season? Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, that way you enter in to our monthly shoutout giveaway. When Joyce requests for medical transport to get her into Dr. Now's office for her next appointment, he sets up a video call to talk to her. By this point, she's far enough in the program that she should be able to make it in on her own, and it doesn't take an expert to see the problem is definitely with her eating. Dr. Now elaborates that she has to be eating five to six times what she should be, and reminds her that she's putting food at a higher importance than saving her own life. He also goes as far as mentioning that he can tell she's gained weight just from seeing her, which definitely had to hurt a little bit. Um, I did look into an ambulance, but it was just too expensive for me to um, afford to go that way. You should have lost enough weight that today you should be able to walk as much as you need to the clinic and come and see us. But that's not happening. Eating too much, you're eating five to six times what you should be right now. And that food is more important than saving your life. Low fat, low carb, high protein food. Even low fat, low carb, by now you should have lost something. But that's clearly not the case. Because you look like you have gained. Um, you're delusional if you believe that. You think uh, you're doing okay because you feel like your clothes are baggy. I can see you right now, and I can tell you have gained. When Sienna gains back some weight for a total net loss of only 24 pounds, Dr. Now asks her what's going on, and gets some puzzling answers. She claims to only be eating tuna and lettuce, and feels that the therapy she's been doing has been helping. But if this is all true, then she shouldn't have gained 13 pounds back. He also asks her if she's lost her copy of her diet plan again, and it kind of seems like he's making fun of her a little, later asking if she's also lost the copy of her exercises. The best part is that she actually has lost both again. Dr. Now also tells her that this is her last chance, so one would hope that she loses some weight this time, and not her fourth copy of the diet plan. Spoiler alert, she doesn't. Um, I found some more different ways to like, I found some, like, mixtures of food that I like. Tuna wrapped in lettuce. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Well, I'm sure it is, but the issue is that's not the only kind of food you've been eating the past two months because you gained. Do you still have the diet, or did you lose it again? Honestly, I lost it again. Are you serious? Yes, sir. So, will it give you another copy? Could you? Have you had any activity over the last two months? What's that? Hmm? Uh, activity? Mm-hmm. Um... With her progress slowing down after the move to Houston, second-time bypass candidate Holly is nervous that Dr. Now is going to tell her it's over. She tells him she's struggling, and he just says, yes, you are, in the most dry, unimpressed tone possible. He then recounts her slow initial progress, and how she's doing even worse after he gave her a second chance, and makes her drop the act of pretending to be confused about her lack of progress. Holly admits that she's having trouble with cravings, due to a record playing in her head, and when Dr. Now asks her what the record is saying, you can just tell from his face that he's already eternally cringing at her response. Holly, stop playing games and lying to me, you know exactly what you're doing when you're making the choices you do. It's just a repeating record in my head that plays over and over and over until I give in. What is record playing saying? I want chocolate, I want chocolate, I want chocolate, I want chocolate. <laughs> so chocolate is more important to you than living, apparently. If you aren't even willing to do this and show me you're ready to work hard, even for the short term, then there is no point in us doing any weight loss surgery or revision on you. 
when Dr. Now confronts Anjanette on her 15 pound gain and asks her what's going on, we can all collectively facepalm when she says that she's been gaining fluid. Dr. Now reminds her that she came to Houston to save her life, and that being approved for surgery isn't a magic pass to go off eating upwards of 8,000 calories again. He also tells her that she has to undo the damage she's done on top of the 50 pounds she's supposed to lose in the next five weeks, or she's not getting her surgery. And this is her last chance. How are you? Good, how are you? Fine, but I'm concerned about you. What's going on? You have gained 15 pounds. Yeah. So you say you're not giving me excuses, and then you give me excuses. To gain 15 pounds in a few weeks means you're taking seven to 8,000 calories a day right now. I don't, I don't know. I don't have words for it. Don't play games with me and pretend you're confused and you don't know. Eating whatever, whenever, and not caring about yourself is gonna get you to the point where you're gonna die soon. So this is a matter of life and death for you, okay? After having only lost 45 pounds, when she was supposed to hit her goal of 100, Angie calls Dr. Now to let him know the results. And after debating whether Angie is under the influence, the two have a battle of sass. Dr. Now delivers zinger after zinger, every time Angie is rude to him during the call, and even keeps the high ground by genuinely wishing her well at the end. Of course, this is a serious matter, so we shouldn't find it funny, but here, take a look at these clips. It's pretty funny. Did you check your weight? Yes. And how much you ate now? I'm down to 598.6, and I'm proud of that. But you're supposed to lose 100 pounds in two months, and on top of that, it's been five months since you were here. So at this point, you haven't shown me you're taking this seriously as you need. On my call with you two months ago, that was the goal I gave you. So either you forgot or you're too high on something to remember. If you're expecting me to come there and sit around and wait for surgery for another month, I'm not coming. I don't have time for that. Heaven forbid we waste any of your time while you waste ours with your lies and games. By the end of her episode, Lashanta's progress has slowed to an absolute halt, and Dr. Now gives her one last, final lecture. It's been nine months, and he's given her all the chances and tools she could possibly need, and he admits that she really did come to Houston for nothing, and is just going to kill herself with food at the rate she's going. Lashanta pleads that she doesn't want to be kicked out of the program, but Dr. Now dishes out the sad reality that she never, ever, even started it. You were 579 pounds when you left the hospital two months ago, and you were supposed to lose 100 pounds. But today you're at 576. You lost the whole three pounds. We've given you every chance possible now, and you gotta kill yourself with the food, and there's nothing we can do to stop you from that. This is all just a game to you, and you ran out of time. I'm gonna lose the weight, give me no, one no, no, more no, 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 I don't believe a word you say, because you keep lying and keep lying to yourself. And there's nothing more I can do for you. Near the beginning of Cilia's episode, when he's being transported into the hospital, Dr. Now questions why his poor health hasn't made him want to do anything about his weight, especially given that he has a fiancé and kids that he supposedly wants to keep alive for. Dr. Now compares his situation to somebody hitting themselves in the head with a baseball bat, and then complaining that it hurts, since like every other patient on the show, his problem is mostly due to his own terrible choices. You having so much difficulty helping puffing, and don't you realize that because of your weight? Oh yeah, I know. I'm not. And that d doesn't stimulate you to do something about it. I don't know how I've let myself get in the position that I'm in. You know the solution is to stop. Right, exactly. But the reality is you haven't wanted to stop eating. So don't pretend that you don't know how you got like this and you have no control of your situation. Okay? Do you have any goal in your life? Yeah, I have a beautiful fiance that I'd like to marry one day. So there's your motivation. Because if you don't start to lose the weight now and get out of this bed, you're going to die soon. And none of that will ever happen for you. 